the hour of coming. And then he says, when ye shall either in this mountain or in Jerusalem worship the Father, the time is coming when the place you worship will not matter as much as your heart. Hallelujah. Uh, Sometimes I believe in God's house. I believe in the temples of God. But you need to know if I can wait on the church uh, to worship God. Hallelujah. If I can wait on drums and instruments to worship God. If I can wait on tambourines and amen to worship God. If I can wait, uh, I'll be messed up by now. But thank God I am the temple of the living God. Y'all don't hear me. And because God is in my temple, I can worship him in my car. I can worship him at home. I can worship him on my job. Can you name I am the temple of God. Which means I can worship him anywhere. I can worship him at any time. I can worship him at any season. So he says uh, the time is coming when the place will not matter. And then he says uh, you Samaritans don't know what you want to worship. Y'all mixed up. You know you want to serve God or gosh. That's the 22nd verse. But we know the salvation is of the Jews. Now Jesus is not trying to say that only the Jews can be saved. But he's saying that salvation of the Messiah came through the Jewish lineage. God chose a people to show himself through. So that the other worlds or the other nations who could become envious of their relationship with God and come back to God. I don't say come to God, but come back to God. Why you say come back? Because Adam and Eve was there about his mama and dad. And they walked with God. There was no nationality. It was just one nationality. The human race. Adam and Eve. But then things got mixed up at the time of Babel. And were no so on and so forth. So he said, I'm going to choose a people. Come on here. That I can show myself through. To make others envious and jealous. So they can come back to God. Tell you neighbor, I'm here to make you jealous. Hallelujah. God is putting his goodness on me to make you jealous. He saved me. Tell you that he's good to me to make you tell it. So you'll want who I got, and that is God. Can you shout hallelujah? But the hour will come in, and now he is. Look what he says in the 20th verse. Believe me, the hour will come in when you should either worship in this mountain or at Jerusalem. But in the 23rd uh, verse, he said, the hour will come in, and now he is. Well, worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. If you notice now, he said the time is coming where the place won't matter, but the time is when you have to worship. In other words, God wants genuine worship. And genuine worship is not a song. Genuine worship is a lifestyle. Bless our God. And so we see in the 24th verse uh, that God in the spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we told you he's not ashamed nor afraid of you. We told you the seventh man possesses the unusual. We told you that he completes and satisfies. We told you that he but the fifth thing you need to know about the seventh man is he desires you. Because verse 23 said the Father seeketh such to worship him. It's a blessing to know that Jesus is looking for me. Years ago as a child, you to sing this song, Jesus my Savior from Bethlehem came. Born in a manger of sorrow and shame. Oh, it is wonderful. How could it be? Seeking for me. He's seeking for me. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, the seventh man, he desires me. You got a whole lot of folk that only want you for a season and a reason. They'll pick you up and then they'll put you down. But the seventh man is seeking gold that will stay in love with God. And that's love that's on falling in love with Jesus. What's well, the best thing that I ever did? Grab your neighbor by the hand and ask him, have you met? The seventh man, oh bless our God, and being here in the 25th verse, the woman said, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one who is called to the Christ, I heard about him, we will talk that a deliverer was coming, we will talk from your Old Testament scriptures that there was going to come a Messiah, and in his name shall be called Emmanuel, and his name shall be called Wonderful and counselor of the mighty God. The old prophet Isaiah said he's the everlasting father. And upon his shoulders there's going to be a government. And his government shall have no end. We will talk to out of the book of Ezekiel that he's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. He has the face of a man, the face of an ox, the face of a lion and an eagle. I heard about this man. And we were told that when he comes, he's going 
Bye. 